treatment. Um, in this page, we have to notice here the treatment for AE COPD, that is the COPD in acute exacerbation stage, is different from the treatment for COPD in stable stage. So, it's very important for us to confirm the stage of COPD so that we can choose the correct therapy for them. And now let's look at the approaches of initiate treatment. These approaches can be used in other disease, including three parts. Part one, treatment for the cause. For example, the cause of COPD is smoking and a chronic bronchitis. And part two, treatment for symptoms. For example, um, the COPD patients usually got cough, sputum, and dyspnea. So we need to provide some therapy for these symptoms. And part three, treatment for comorbidities. For example, if a patient got AE COPD with pneumonia, we also need to do some um, treatment for this pneumonia. Let's move to the drugs for COPD. The most important drugs for COPD is the bronchodilators, including three types of the drugs. Um, beta-2 agonists, anticholinergics, methylstenstins. Those drugs can dilate bronchi. And another important drug for COPD is the corticosteroids, which can help to control the inflammation in the bronchus and others. There are three administration roles of the drugs for COPD patients. The first one is through the oral. For short, it is PO. And another one is injection wave wing. For short, it is IV. The third one is inhaled by different device. One of the device is nebulizers. Let's look at this picture. These two devices are the nebulizers. And we can add some liquid medicine into this device and the patient can inhale the drug for, um, through the mouth or through the nose. In general, we choose this device for adult and choose the another device for children or some patients in coma. Another type of the inhaler is called a metered dose inhaler, as this picture showing. The drugs are sold in the device with accurate dose in each inhalation. Beta-2 agonist is one of the most popular drugs of the bronchodilators. It can be divided into two subtypes. One is the short-acting beta-2 agonist. For short, it is SABA, and the sabatoma is a typical drug of Saba. Another subtype of beta-2 agonists is long-acting. For short, it is LABA, LABA. For example, the cemetery in this device belongs to LABA. About the adverse reactions, we need to notice the tachycardia and arrhythmia caused by the beta-2 agonists. Because in my clinical work works, in my clinical works, most of the OH patients cannot tolerate beta-2 agonists because of 
adverse reaction in heart. That's the first type of bronchodilators. Another one of the bronchodilators is anticholinergic agents. It also can be divided into two subtypes. One is the short acting. For short, it is SAMA, SAMA. And another subtype is long acting. For short, it's LAMA, LAMA. And uh, this drug, Tyotropin, is a popular drug for us to treat the COPD patient in stable stage. And about the adverse reaction, we need to pay attention to here. This anticholinergic agents can increase the intraocular pressures. So if the patient suffer from um, glaucoma, we cannot use these drugs for these patients. And some male patients with old age are likely suffered from the hypertrophic of the prostate. In this condition, once we start to treat them with the anticholinergic agents, we need to pay attention to the adverse reactions of the dysuria. Methylxanthine is also a type of the bronchodilators, including the theophylin, doxyphylin, and so on. About the adverse reaction of these drugs, we must notice the intoxication of this drug because the dose for the treatment is similar to the dose for the intoxications. So we need to do some prevention for it. Corticosteroid is not a bronchodilator, but it's also important for the COPD patients because this drug can control the chronic inflammation in the bronchus. According to the administration rules, the corticosteroid can be divided into three subtypes. One is the inhaled CS, for example, the budisonate here. And another one is the oral corticosteroid, for example, the prednisone. And another one is the IVCS, for example, the methylprednisone. We will choose different administration road for different COPD patients according to the severity of the COPD and the adverse reaction. About the adverse reactions, we need to notice here the infection. The corticosteroid will reduce the lymph site in the blood. Therefore, it can resolved in the um, exacerbation of the infection and a new opportunic infection by tuberculosis or fungus. So we usually provide um, a short-term therapy of oral CS or IVCS for the AECOPD patients and provide inhaled CS for the um, COPD patients in stable stage. Other drugs for COPD include microlite, which will reduce the inflammation of the um, bronchus, anti leukogenes and so on. And about other therapy for COPD include oxygen therapy, pulmonary rehabilitation training, 
and mechanical ventilation. Sometimes, um, surgery is required for some special patients. For example, the, the lung volume reducing surgery is required for the patients with a lot of bullying and uh, lung transplantation is required for some um, for some patients with uh, bad lung functions. Let's do a summary for the treatment for ACOPD patients. One, oxygen therapy. It is required low flow. Usually two to three liter per minute oxygen therapy. And two, antibiotics. Antibiotics is required only when the patients combining with the um, respiratory infections. Three, bronchodilators, including the beta-2 agonists, anticholinergics, methylxanthines. Please hear, um, please pay attention to hear. Um, we must choose the short acting for ACOPD, including the SABA SABA and SAMA SAMA. Um, for the ACOPD patients, we cannot choose the long acting bronchodilators for the symptoms. And four, corticosteroid is required for ACOPD patients, both inhaled CS or systematic CS. We choose the administration road according to the severity of the dyspnea. And five, mechanical ventilations. Um, some patients combining with respiratory failure will need mechanical ventilations. About the treatment for COPD in stable stage, we need to come back to the assessment of the um, group A, B, C, D. We just talked about that there is a relationship between the assessment and the treatment for COPD in stable stage. And here are two principles for the therapy regime for the COPD patients in stable stage. One is that the therapy regime for COPD in stable stage are associated with group A, B, C, D, like this. And two, two we need to choose the long-acting and inhaled drugs for these patients. And um, the drugs with less frequency is much better. We just talked about that the assessment of a group A, B, C, D is associated with the treatment for COPD in stable stage. Uh, we know that there are two factors in the assessment. One is the MMRC grade. The group, uh, the patients in group B and D, got higher MMRC grade than the patients in group A and C. That means the patients in group B and D got much more severe dyspnea than the patients in group A and C. So the patients in group B and D required one more bronchodilator than the patients in group A and C. For example, the patients in group B required two bronchodilators and group, the patients in group 1 only required one bronchodilator. So as to the patients in group D, we, we found that um, they required 
two bronchodilators, and about the patients in group C, they only required one bronchodilator. So, um, this is the meaning of this infect. And there is another infector about the exacerbation history. Uh, uh, the exacerbation histories occurs more time in the group C and D than the group A and B, so that the patients in group C and D requires the ICS to control the uh, level of the chronic bronchitis. And the patients in group A and B do not need ICS. For short, that is group A, zero or one drug. Group B, one or two drugs, that is bronchodilators. And group C usually choose two drugs for these patients, include sometimes, many times, including the ICS. And group D, we usually choose two or three drugs for these patients, usually including the ICS. Other therapies. Smoking cessation is required for all the COPD patients with a smoking history. Two, vaccine is also very important for COPD patients with a high risk of exacerbations. For example, the patients over 65 years old and younger COPD patients with significant chronic heart or lung disease. Three, the pulmonary rehabilitation training and the breathing exercise is good for the COPD patients to rebuild their pulmonary functions. Five, um, for some special COPD patients in group D, the long-term oxygen therapy is required to avoid combining copalmonal, which caused by the hypoxia. Now, it's time for the case discussion. Mm, let's do the case analysis together, okay? Here shows a patient, a male, 62 years old, farmer. The chief complaint of the patient is cough, sputum, and dyspnea for 10 years turning worse for one week. This page shows the medical record of this patient. And now you have two minutes to read this medical record. Let's start the um, okay. Let's start the case analysis. At first, we can figure out the most important information from the medical record, including the positive symptoms, positive histories, and positive signs. And after that, we can write down the details on the paper. And that is the clinical manifestation of these patients.
And now, let's try to find the meanings of the details. Firstly, it's a 62 years old man with a long-term smoking history. And two, the chief symptoms of this patient is cough, spirit, and dyspnea. And 10 words for one week shows that this patient may be suffer a disease in the acute stage. And in the medical record, we can also find the yellow sputum exist. And more details in the symptoms. We can find that this patient feel uh, severe dyspnea after walking less than 500 meters. According to the MMRC scale, we can conclude a MMRC grade 2. And this patient also got exacerbation history three times in last year. So if uh, there is a COPD, and we can conclude that this patient belongs to the group D. Okay, about the physical examination, we can find the fever exists. And um, according to the physical examination of the chest, we can find the positive signs of barrel chest, whiten of the intercostal gaps, breast sound of the both lungs decreasing. All of these positive signs shows uh, emphysema. And about the crackles, the crackles shows that some fruit in small airway and that is um, acute inflammatory infusion, infusion by infection. So according to these details, we can conclude that the initiate suspective diagnosis for this patient is COPD according to the um, old man long-term smoking history. The main symptoms is cough, sputum, and dyspnea, and with positive signs of um, emphysema. And finally, we can conclude the diagnosis of COPD. According to this detail, we can find that this patient may be suffer from COPD in the acute exacerbation stage. But we also can find that some positive symptoms and signs cannot be explained by COPD. Those are yellow sputum, fever, and crackles in both lungs. In this condition, we need to think about that whether there are some else diagnosis for this patient and which diagnosis will feed yellow sputum, fever, and crackles in, in both lungs. I think the most probable diagnosis for this patient is pneumonia. So that's our first question. What's your primary diagnosis and differentiate diagnosis? And our initiate suspective diagnosis include chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in acute exacerbation stage, that is AE COPD. And another suspective diagnosis is pneumonia. For the differential diagnosis, we need to exclude asthma and left heart failure for this patient. Question two, how to confirm your diagnosis? We need to think about the answer of this question for each of the initiate diagnosis. First one, um, we need spermature to confirm the diagnosis of COPD, that is spermature. And for the pneumonia, we need chest X-ray or CT scan and count of WBC for 
um, diagnosis of pneumonia. Here are the results of the auxiliary examinations. The first one is the spirometer. You can find that the FEV1 over FVC is 44%, less than 70%. So, according to this data, we can conclude the diagnosis of COPD. And another data is FEV1 in predict is 34% between 30% to 50%. So, according to this uh, data, we can conclude that this patient belongs to GOLD-3. Another auxiliary examination is the blood routine test. According to this test, we can find the increasing of the white blood cell count and the neutrophilic cell count. And according to the data, we can find the existence of the infection. And about the CT scan, the results shows the infection in both lower lumps and emphysema in both lumps. Um, so we can conclude the diagnosis of the pneumonia. And the emphysema is one part of COPD. So we just write down the diagnosis of AE COPD, but we don't need to write down an emphysema here. Question four, what's your treatment for now? That means the treatment for COPD in acute exacerbation stage. And now, it's easy for us to write down the answer, right? Let's look at the answers. Firstly, we need oxygen therapy with low flow oxygen for this patient. And two, um, we need antibiotics to treat pneumonia. Here, I choose one kind of penicillin for anti-infective therapy. Three, we need some short-acting bronchodilators, including the sambatoma and iprotropium bromide for inhaled therapy. And four, I choose a IV um, corticosteroid for these patients' severe dyspnea. And five, do not neglect the doxyphilin, another kind of the bronchodilators. What's your treatment when the patient discharged from the hospital? That means the treatment for the COPD in stable stage. Before we determine the therapy regime for the COPD patients, we need to confirm which group do the patients belong to. For this patient, we know that this patient got exacerbation history three times per year and this patient feel dyspnea after walking less than 500 meters. That means the MMRC grade two. So we can conclude that this patient, belong to, this patient belongs to um, group D. And next, according to the group D, we can determine the therapy regime for the LABA plus LAMA plus SAS. For the, um, for the drugs, we can choose um, Semitoro plus Fruticasol plus Tyotropin. And there are also other treatments for this patient, including the smoking cessation and vaccinations. And we can also ask the patient to take pulmonary rehabilitation training to improve his pulmonary functions. Okay, let's do a summary. We just need to focus on the two mast contents. Um, this, the contents about two mast is which you need to keep in mind firmly. And it's important for exam and clinical work, including the 
symptoms and signs of COPD, and the diagnosis of COPD. Spirometry report and how to divide them into different groups. And about treatment, you need to um, remember the drug types and different therapy regimes in two stage according to the group A to D. Okay, that's the contents of this class. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can tell me in the group WeChat. Here's just the references of this class. Um, the gold guideline is very important for our clinical work. I hope you can download the file of the gold guideline for further learning. And that's all of this class. Thank you.